Hi, welcome to Wise Guys. This video is on um, finding the lowest common denominator when we're adding or subtracting algebraic fractions. So just as we would with normal fractions, when we're adding or subtracting algebraic fractions, we need a lowest common denominator. And normally when we're finding the lowest common denominator, we're looking for the prime number. Usually when we're working with fractions, we're not really thinking about the fact we're looking for the prime number. But let's just talk about prime numbers for a, for a minute here. What is a prime number? A prime number is any number that has only two factors, and those factors being one and itself. Okay. An example of that is the number two. The factors of 2, or the things that multiply together to give us 2, are 1 and 2. So this is a prime number. 3 is a prime number because we only the only factors of 3 are 1 and 3. 4 is not a prime number because 2 times 2 will give us 4. And then, of course, we can factor this. That's 2 and 1 and 2 and 1. So this is not a prime number. 5 is a prime number because 1 times 5 will give us 5. 6 is not a prime number because 3 times 2 will give us 6. 7 is a prime number because the factors of 7 are 1 and 7. The next prime number after 7 is 11 because that's 11 times 1. Now when we're dealing with algebraic terms, if we have um, 3ax, for example, 3 is a prime number, a is a prime number, and x is a prime number. If we had 9a squared x, we don't say this is a times a, we count the fact that it's squared. And the, we reduce the 9, which is not a prime number, to a prime number. And we say that this is 3 squared times a squared times x. So these become our prime numbers. And the 3 is squared. All right. So when we look at these numbers here, we can see that our denominator here is basically 2 times 2, or 2 squared. We can see that our 9 reduces to the prime numbers of 3 times 3. And again, because it's 3 times 3, we can write it as 3 squared. This, the 6, becomes 3 times 2. Now. The 2 squared takes care of the 2, so then we say then we have 2 squared as, as the, the prime numbers for the 2, and the 3 squared. So our lowest common denominator becomes 2 squared times 3 squared. And again, this 3 is taken care of by this 3 squared, and this 2 is taken care of by the fact that this is squared. So then we end up with 4 times 9, which is 36. And I'm sure many of you were aware of the fact that the lowest common denominator here was 36. And that's what we're doing to solve for that lowest common denominator, is we use the prime numbers. So we will be using prime numbers in dealing with algebraic terms. So here we have three terms. And we have to find out what the denominator of each of them is. So we can see here 6ax cubed. We reduce it to the prime numbers. 3 times 2 times a times x cubed. This one becomes 3 times a squared times x. The 4 becomes 2 squared, because 2 is the prime number times a times x squared. Then we pull out the factors. We see that we have 1, 3. 
We have a 2 here, but we have a 2 squared here, so then we count the 2 squared. We have an a here, and an a squared here, and an a, so then the a squared is what we use. We have an x cubed here, an x, and an x squared, so then the x cubed is used. So then we have 3 times 2 squared times x cubed times a squared. This becomes 12, and we have a squared x cubed. So that's the LCD for this. Then once you have the LCD, then you change these pieces here, which we'll do on the next page. <coughs> Excuse me. So now here what we have to do is find the factors. We can see here that we have 3 times 2 times a times x cubed. Here we have 3 times a squared times x. Here we have 2 squared times a, oh sorry, times a, times x squared. So then, what's the denominator we need? We see we need the 3, okay? So there's the 3, we have a 3 there. There's a 2 here, but there's a 2 squared here, so then that becomes a 2 squared, so we need the 2 squared, so let's get rid of that and get rid of that, get rid of our 3's. We see we have an a here and an a squared here, so we need an a squared. And we have an x cubed here, an x, and an x squared, so we need an x cubed. So then our denominator becomes 4 times 3, which is 12, a squared x cubed. All right, that's what we need for a denominator. So then let's rewrite our terms. So 6ax cubed plus 3a squared x plus 4ax squared. We have a 5 on the top here, a 4 on the top here, and a 7 on the top here. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> what we need for our denominator is this. Okay. So then we ask ourselves, what do I have to multiply this by in order to get 12a squared x? Well, I have to multiply the 6 by a 2, and I have to multiply the a by an a. So I have to multiply the denominator by 2a. If I multiply the denominator by 2a, I have to multiply the numerator by 2a. Then I look at this one. I say, all right, I need to multiply the 3 times a 4 to give me the 12. The a squared is fine, and I need to multiply the x by x squared. So what I do to the bottom, I must do to the top, so I have to multiply the top by 4x squared. That's supposed to be squared. Now I look at this one, I have 4ax squared. I have to multiply the denominator by a 3. To get the 12, I need to multiply it by an a in order to get the a squared, and I need to multiply it by an x in order to get the x cubed. What I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator, so I multiply the top by 3ax. Okay? So now, I think we're all confident that the denominator now is 12a squared x cubed. Feeling not confident, let's look. So 12a squared x cubed, 12a squared x cubed, 12a squared x cubed. So we're good here. So now we know that when we're adding fractions and the denominator is the same, you can essentially put them all over that one denominator. 
which is 12 a squared x cubed. All right? We we already figured out what we have to multiply the top by. So here on the top we have 10a. On the top here we have plus 4 times 4, so we have 16, and that's x squared. And then plus again, 21ax. Now we look on the top and see if we have any like terms. We don't. The only thing that we would do differently here, if you wanted to, is just to put the 16x squared first. So we can say we have 16x squared plus 21ax plus 10a all over the 12a squared x cubed. All right? So there you go. And if you just sort of walk through it slowly and patiently, you'll get you'll get it done. It's just a lot of fussing around, okay? All right, so that was brought to you by Wise Guys. I hope you have a super day. Take care.